my man. Hello, Western Conservative Summit. They told me I have 20 minutes. That means 40 minutes for me because they gave me this super cool microphone. Are you seeing this thing? It's like NSYNC. I'm so excited. I get this like little headset here. How are you doing? I'm clearly sleep deprived because one, we have a Newsmax show. Two, we work for Turning Point USA, great organization. Three, we give speech like, speeches like this for the Centennial Institute and Jeff and what an incredible group of kids and what an amazing group of people putting this whole thing on, I mean, honestly. But then my most important job on earth, and I think the most important job that any man can have on earth, is being a father. And I am a father of two little girls. That's number one, that's Eloise. Eloise came into our life uh, two years ago, and whew, doesn't it change you? Dudes, can I hear this? Like, it changes you, right? fills your soul and you become so happy. You come home and there's someone to greet you. You get to not only have a beautiful baby greet you when you're a father, they didn't tell me this, by the way, when my wife and I got pregnant, you also get to instill your values in your child. This is how my kid responds to every mask she sees. There you go, right on the floor. Where my daughter was nine months old in that video and she's still smarter than Dr. Fauci. Take the masks off. <laughs> so then you get and, and you get every morning to play Tucker Carlson for him. Take that lib. So my kid hates masks. She's adorable. She's getting indoctrinated on Tucker Carlson. We are living the life. And so just like a slice of pie can't just have one slice, you gotta have another. Juliet is one month old, this is a very recent photo. And uh, I'm a proud father. And I'm just like a happy dude. I'm very, again, I'm very sleep deprived. We flew in today, but I'm like really happy. And so what I wanted to do today was put together a presentation, it's probably not gonna make a lot of sense, but it's going to be like a shot of B12. There's a lot of doomers out there, they're like, everything's going wrong and everything's terrible. I don't think that, because I can't think that, because I don't want to raise my kids into a terrible society. I don't want to raise my kids if I think everything's doomed and our country's doomed. Why would we ever have kids? And we want people to have more kids. Am I wrong? More Americans. Don't we want more kids in this country? So what I want to talk about tonight, ever so briefly, is why I'm excited for the future of this nation, why I'm going to be proudly raising my children as patriots, and uh, I think most importantly is the advice that I'm going to give to my daughters when they're old enough to hear it, when they stop projectile vomiting all over me. <laughs> so, and you, you heard one of, uh, yes, actually, it's very depressing. I used to work for Tucker Carlson, and uh, before Eloise could say the name Ben, she could say the name Tucker. So Tucker was one of her first words. That's, there's gotta be some parenting metric for that. So the first question is if you, you know, if you wanna raise happy kids, which I do, and if you wanna raise like well-rounded kids, which I do, you gotta know what 
you don't want, right? So you got to parse these things out. What do you want and what don't you want? And what I see a lot these days, and maybe you do too, I'm sure there's plenty of them in Colorado, is really angry, bitter, liberal women. There seems to be an incredible surplus of that in this country. There's no gasoline, there's no toilet paper, but there's lots of angry liberal women on the street. And so why are they so angry? I thought I'd study that so that my daughter doesn't become one. And so I asked, <clears throat> actually, I asked a lib, I said, Lib, why are you so sad? Why don't you be happy? Lib, please be happy. Lib, be happy, please. Oh, come on. Can you please just be happy for once in your life? Oh. Well, why aren't they happy? I decided to search more. What are they so sad about? I found this. I'm sitting in my car crying right now over the loss of more lives, and this is what is about to drive past me. <laughs> oh, I'm like shook right now. Oh, there's another one. Another one coming. There's a parade of them. I'm shaking. What is uh, So apparently trucks with flags, that's what makes them unhappy. Any truck drivers in the audience here? Oh, yeah. The guy in the back with his arms straight up. It was him in the video, by the way. It was his truck. He drives around her house every single day. You terrorist. <laughs> and if they're this upset about trucks, what, what are they going to do when we overturn Roe versus Wade? Oh, no. Oh, Libs, I'm so sorry. Okay, so that's the first piece of advice. First piece of advice, please don't be a lib. That's the first piece of advice for my daughters. Don't be a lib. You want, you want to be happy. I'm sorry, I know Tulsi's backstage, but just don't be a lib. Like, that's the first rule. They can hang out with Tulsi. I don't care. She's a cool lib. Okay, number two, God created you and wants you to be happy. Pretty basic, pretty basic, but it's really the core of everything. If you think about a young girl and what happens to young girls in society, I want them to remember verses like this. I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. I want my daughters to remember verses like this. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Every hair on your head is numbered. If you, if you know you have value because a creator gave you value, then you'll start behaving like a virtuous, valuable woman. You won't degrade yourself. You won't listen to these lies of culture. It really is something that I want them to know, and I want them to know that they're beautiful because God created them. God designed them. You're beautiful is the third thing I want my daughters to know all the time. There's an entire trillion dollar industry set against young, telling young girls that they need something else and that they're not beautiful the way they were designed and that they're not perfect and that, that there's something wrong with them. And there's not. We're in a really beautiful state here in the state of Colorado. I was doing a, a report today from Denver and I was, <laughs> had my film crew there in a shanty town of tents. I was stepping on syringes. There were homeless people all around me. And um, uh, one of them was really funny, actually. Didn't have any teeth. But what's the point? I looked up from that shanty town, and I saw the Rockies. And I was like, look at this majestic thing God created. And God's, the, the natural world that God created in its natural essence is so beautiful. And if you're from Colorado, man, you know that. There are some incredibly gorgeous places here in this state. And what I, I want my daughters to travel, and what I want to tell them is this, that while God created nature this stunning and gorgeous, God says that he created man and woman in his own image. And so if God creates nature this stunning and gorgeous, he created you stunning and gorgeous and beautiful. He put more work into you than he did into these beautiful naturescapes. You, my little girls, are beautiful.
because God created you. I definitely did not film that in downtown Denver at the Shantytown. There is so much in society about degrading women, and it comes through social media, and that's where I work day and night on social media. And so I just want to protect my daughters from that, and I feel like the best protection, and I know this world very well, the best protection is to know their value in their soul, that they are a special, beautiful being designed by God, and they do not need the approval of anyone else. They do not need society or culture's approval. That God creating them is good enough. And they can turn off TikTok. It's Chinese spyware anyway. It's so stupid. The Chinese, you know what Chinese TikTok looks like in China? They, they don't put people dancing or women degrading themselves up at the top of the feed like they do here. They put on scientists and mathematicians and people who do biology and successful businessmen. They want to degrade our culture and we're not gonna let it happen in the Johnson household. Get your kids off TikTok, if they're on. Four, become a woman of high value. Any single women in the audience? Any single women? Matt, this is how you know you're talking at a conservative conference. There's one single woman way in the back. <laughs> Do you want to marry a man of high value? Would you like to marry a man of high spiritual value? Yes. High moral value? Yes. High physical value? Yes. Then behave like a woman of high value. Treat yourself like a woman of high value. You'll attract that man. You'll attract them. There's a reason why Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson are dating. It's because they're sick and toxic. And they're totally toxic individuals. And they are attracted to the fact that they're both toxic. High value people attract each other and they're really happy together. I can prove it. This is how most conservative proposals go. <laughs> Will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> Pew Research Study did an incredible report and I just can't believe they even published this because it's so damning for the leftist worldview about happiness. And all the way back to 1972, 50 years ago, you have Republicans, sorry, conservatives, year over year, demonstrably happier. Why? Why are conservatives happier than liberals? Well, the study found that conservatives are healthier, wealthier, love their jobs, have more friends, are more religious, are more likely to be married, and more likely to have children by a huge order of magnitude. The Atlantic, who hates conservatives, wrote this. Conservatives tend to do the kind of things that lead to happiness, like getting married and having children and going to church. Conservatives build social connections that make us feel happy. We are the happy people in society because we choose the things that make us happy. Strong families make strong nations. I know it seems old-timey. I know. I get it, right? It seems old-timey. But your great-grandmother was onto something. Like, there is actual true hard data and studies empirically and peer-reviewed that show that Christians have greater marital satisfaction. Conservative religious couples are by far the happiest of any couples polled. And you want a country of happy people, right? You want a country of like well-balanced, good-natured people. Religiously active people are happier and more civically engaged. They have healthier lifestyle choices. We should be proud of some of these results. These are recent articles from this year. U.S. divorce rate hits 50-year low. U.S. birth rates rises for the first time since 2014. Thank you, Jeff Hunt. The birth rate increase was just Jeff and his family. <laughs> Give yourself a round of applause. This is the work of Christian conservatives. This is us winning in culture. We don't talk enough about how we are correcting course on some of these things. And it's really special. 
Your life is your responsibility. I want my daughters to know what you choose, the choices you make won't be made by the government and they won't be made by me, they'll be made by you. So you can choose to be happy or not. Last bit of data I have for you all, but I think it's so fascinating from the Pew Research study. Factors that increase the odds of happiness, your health, your church attendance, way up near the top. Everything else is below that. But being married and party ID, being a conservative is on there. You know what's shocking to me about this? The things that do not lead to an indication of whether you'll be happy, race, race, ethnicity, and gender. What are the things that the left is so obsessed over? Race, ethnicity, and gender. Those things do not lead to happiness. There's no measurable scientific difference between someone having a different race and their happiness or their gender. What do conservatives choose? The dark green bar is what conservatives choose. It's what we value. The light green bar is what the left values. Conservatives, by and large, by a huge margin, choose being married, having children, and living a religious life as what will lead to their happiness and what's very important in their lives. There's so much science on this. There's so much data on this, and we never talk about it. We win because we are happy. We win because we make choices for being happy. Are there any couples in here that have been married more than 50 years? Look at this, down in the front row. What's your name? What's your name? John? And? And Janet? John and Janet, everyone. Are you happy? Do you love each other? 59 years! Yes, John and Janet! Do you love her more, like, every day? Have you lived a happy, joyous life? You should see him beaming. He loves, her, he loves her as much or more today than the day you married her, didn't you? Don't you? Look at how happy they are. That's the American dream. And we're the only ones doing it. So that's the final piece of advice. The final piece of advice for my, for my daughters here is, sorry guys, once bounced ahead and bounced back. We'll get there, click, click, click. Sorry about it. The final piece of advice, I'll skip ahead, is that you were made for this time. The number one thing that my wife and I get asked by young women or men on Instagram is how could you possibly have kids right now? Isn't the world so scary? How could you possibly, you know, why would you want to start a family right now? There's so much out there. It's so scary. Whew. You got to open up a history book. Man, like, what did people go through during the Revolutionary War? What about the Civil War? A million plus Americans died in the Civil War. You think this is the scariest time in American history? You are wrong. You are absolutely wrong. And God says in his word that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Live brave, start families, be happy, and go forth. Make more Americans. That's what I tell all the young people that write me. Make more Americans. And you know what? Young people are, by and large, choosing to. Get a load of this data. Again, now I'm the shot of B B B12 for you tonight, okay? I'm the shot that like, should hopefully like, give a little bit of optimism for where we're headed. Look at the abortion rate. Do you know that the, abortion, the number of abortions are down in all 50 states? All 50. <laughs> that abortion hasn't been this low since it was made legal by the most garbage decision in, in Supreme Court history. We are winning on this issue. Now, don't ask this lady who says this. Um, I'm with CNS News. The Supreme Court this fall will review a Mississippi law that bans most abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. Is an unborn baby at 15 weeks a human being? <coughs> Let me just say that I'm a big supporter of Roe v. Wade. Uh, I am a mother of five children in six years. I think I have some standing on this issue as to respecting woman's right to choose. Is it a human being? Yes. Won't answer if it's a human being. Calls herself a Christian. Sickening. Disgusting. I got, a, I got a super helpful little diagram for you, Nancy. Pretty easy. 
Here's your body. You make your choices. That's someone else's body. It's someone else's body. And that body, that human being, that spark of life given by God has a right to life. And not only that, you are living in the only country in the world where that is enshrined in our Constitution. The right to life, liberty, and happiness. Taking of an unborn life denies an American the right to life that they are guaranteed. Therefore, abortion is unconstitutional. And you know who agrees with me? Nancy Pelosi is now banned in five Catholic dioceses from taking sacraments. It should be all of them. Good. And you know who we send to Congress? That's who, that's, that's who the left sends to Congress to defend abortion rights. You know who we send to Congress? Regular mom. A regular mom was called into Congress. She's just, she's just a regular mother called into Congress to be browbeat by one of the most powerful Democrats in Congress. How'd that work out? Let me play it for you. Is candidly and openly calling for a nationwide ban on all abortions with no exceptions for rape or incest. And if I've got that wrong, I would invite Ms. Foster to correct me. Do I have it wrong, yes or no? Um, if we added rape and incest exceptions, would you vote for it? Uh, okay, if, uh, I reclaim my time, of course. Uh, <laughs> Conservative savage mom! Taking down Jamie Raskin. Impeachment. Jamie Raskin. Ah, oh, so awesome. They're telling me I'm out of time. The question is, can I play you guys one more video? Yeah, Je I'm sorry, Jeff. Did you hear the sweet people? Can I play you one more? It gets really good here at the end. Can I play you one more video? All right. All right. This is who you beautiful people sent Thank to Congress. You, Speaker, Democrat policies are so pathetic and have done so poorly that the left has nothing else to do but troll the internet looking for ways to get offended and then try to target members and strip them of their committees. This is a dumb waste of the House's time. But since the Speaker has designated the floor to discuss members' inappropriate actions, shall we? The Jihad Squad member from Minnesota has paid her husband, and not her brother husband, the other one, over a million dollars in campaign funds. This member is allowed on the Foreign Affairs Committee while praising terrorists. A Democrat chairwoman incited further violence in the streets outside of a courthouse. And then the cherry on top. My colleague and three-month presidential candidate from California, who is on the Intelligence Committee, slept with Fang Fang, a Chinese spy. Let me say that again. A member of Congress who receives classified Gentlemen, briefings was Gentlemen sleeping with the Florida. enemy. This is unacceptable, <clears throat> and this would never Gentlemen, be... Gentlemen, his time's expired. Gentlemen from Florida. Let me thank you for Lauren Boebert, Colorado. God bless you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Colorado. Thank you for Lauren Boebert. Thank you, Colorado, for Lauren Boebert. Amazing. I had more funny videos for you, but I'm getting the shepherd's crook. I say you show another funny video. I'm getting the, We're oh fun. yeah? Okay, I got video? one more for you. All right, go Can for we it. do one more? <laughs> One more, last one, I promise. One more. Okay, one more, one more. Just to show you, and this is the close, just to show you the difference between my daughter's learning and per perhaps your daughter. Do you have children? Do you have daughters? Were you a girl dad? Girl dad? Yes, proud girl dad? Are they great? Did they learn some of these lessons from you? The answer is yes. The difference between following these lessons with your kids and not. These are the results. Here we go. This is what it looks like to not teach your child any truth. This is how stupid they sound. Watch this. Uh, can you provide a definition for the word woman? 
Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. This is the person who's going to decide women's issues in the Supreme Court. Got it. Okay? That's the difference between what the left, that is how the left teaches their kids. That is the final result of what they teach. Here's the final result of if you raise your daughter the way that we've been talking about, the way that this beautiful couple raised their kids, the way that I'm sure many of you raise your daughters. than to actually address that I said to, the things that I said today that are actually harming black America. Number one, father absence. Number two, the education system and the illiteracy rate. Illegal immigration ranks high, abortion ranks high, white supremacy and white nationalism, if I had to make a list again of 100 things, would not be on it. This hearing, in my opinion, is a farce. And it is ironic that you're sitting here and you're having three Caucasian people testify and tell you what their expertise are. Do you want to know what my expertise are? Black in America. I've been black in America my whole life, all 30 years, and I can tell you that you guys have done the exact same thing every four years I have an election cycle, and it needs to stop. Boom! 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 The real, the real epidemic is fatherlessness in this country. The real pandemic is fatherlessness in this country. Every mass shooter, family problems. Every drug addict, absent father. We need good men, good girl dads to stand up and raise their sons, to raise their women and their daughters, and to be good husbands to their wives. We need fathers in this country. That's the real, real epidemic in this nation. Candace Owens gets it. Jeff gets it. And we are, we're going to change this problem. We're going to be dads, man. I'm a girl dad. I'm really happy. And I'm so honored to be sharing my evening with you. Thank you so much. Benny Johnson.